Good morning, and welcome to what may be the final uh, installment of our reading of uh, the Chicken Kabbalah of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford. Uh, I'm going to try to get through this uh, today uh, because the ending is rather poignant, and I would like us to be able to savor it, but it also also sort of uh, uh, goes smoothly to the very end. Uh, and I want us to all get it in. So today's may run a little bit longer. Uh, so please forgive me if it does. I'm going to try to finish up today. Uh, also tomorrow, as I mentioned before, we're going to start reading from my book. There it is. Low Magic. It's all in your head. You have to just no idea how big your head is, and uh, it, uh, I got the most requests to do that one next. So I hope you'll join me starting tomorrow uh, for that. Also, if, you didn't, if you've enjoyed the Chicken Kabbalah, uh, and especially if you uh, uh, purchase and own the Chicken Kabbalah and are studying it, I strongly recommend Son of Chicken Kabbalah which is an initiatory process. It's sort of like a do-it-yourself Kabbalah initiation, uh, a three-degree uh, Kabbalah initiation program. And it's based more or less, once you've got a good foundation in the chicken Kabbalah, it also is a, is a lot of fun. It's not particularly uh, suited to, to read aloud, but uh, I hope if you've enjoyed the Chicken Kabbalah, you'll enjoy Son of Chicken Kabbalah too. So, with that being said, we're on the chapter Games Kabbalists Play, and this is the last lecture of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford, uh, and he's gotten to the, the technique of Noterakon. There are two types, there, excuse me, there are two kinds of Noterakon. The first condenses a word or sentence or a phrase into a more simple form in order to extract fundamental truth. The second method expands a word into a sentence whose component words are the initials of the original word. The former is the most commonly used and it's exercised by using only the initials of the complete word to arrive at another word or number of significance. There are thousands of examples of this to be found in the Hebrew words and phrases in the Bible. Quite frankly, it's not really very impressive because anybody can make <laughs> anybody can make most anything say most anything else. It all depends on your personal sectarian preferences. And I give you an example in the footnote. Perhaps the most famous example of Noterakon is the word Bereshit. Now I'm just going to spell these words out in English. So, uh, uh, which is the first word of Genesis, Bereshit Elohim. Bereshit is the first word of Genesis, commonly transcribed or translated as in the beginning. Bereshit can be expanded to say a longer Hebrew word uh, sentence using the initials of Bereshit. And that would translate, in the beginning, Elohim saw that Israel would accept the law. Now, the shortcomings of this exercise are obvious, for while the above sentence may have profound meaning to a Kabbalist who is an Orthodox Jew, the Christian Kabbalist might prefer Prosper Rogere's interpretation, and then this is translated the initials of Bereshit into Latin, uh, When the Master shall come, whose name is Jesus, ye shall worship. Then again, the diabolist might argue that B R A S H I T H really means, and then a sentence, 
in the beginning asmodei the demon king saw that israel would accept hallucinations the spiritual payoff doesn't come from providing from proving a word is the perfect cryptographic definition of something else but by breaking free of our day-to-day -day thought patterns and realizing that anything is potentially anything else. For our example, observe the phrase in English, I did it on time, reduces to the word idiot, I-D-I-O-T. Idiot equals one, it equals I-10, D-4, I-10, O six T H uh, four hundred or four hundred and thirty equals Nepish the animal soul of man. Idiot, the animal soul of man. Oh God, this is getting too easy. The next form of notericon is a process that expands a letter, a word, or a sentence. For our example, let's continue the chain of ideas we started earlier and expand on the letter Yod. Yod means hand. And the word H-A-N-D can be expanded to reveal America's most worn out and meaningless blessing. Have a nice day. But let's not stop here. When we expand have a nice day, we discover that the individual letters of that nauseating mantra of insincerity expand into the delicious axiom of decadence. Heroin and vodka ease agony. Nothing is certain except death and yesterday. I had fun doing this, okay? What does it all mean? Who cares? Okay, Tim, <laughs> Timura. With Timura, and you can pronounce Timura any way you want. Timura, uh, with Timura, letters are replaced by other letters. It's the classic secret code. There are infinite ways this can be done, so I'll only show you a few. The most primitive form of Timura simply rearranges letters in a word or phrase. Let's look at that phrase, have a nice day. And it can be arranged to yield up all sorts of profundities. You may start your day with a simple affirmation. Have, excuse me, each day naive. See, these, they all use the exact same letters, just mixed up. Or coldly curse people by telling them, have a ice day. Or you might suggest a dessert to your friend. Have a nice, Andy. Or you might meet someone at the uncomfortable corner of Hay and Ice Avenue. Did you ever begin your prayer to David, the patron saint of outlaw motorcyclists? Ave Chain Dave. Movie villains may ask, can a heavy die? What a stupid question. Of course, a heavy can die. You might admire someone's firm handshake and exclaim, yeah, a vice hand. You might eat too much chocolate and have to warn people, I heave the candy. Your dentist my, your dentist might make you wear a sign that says, I, a decay heaven. Oh, excuse me. I, a decay haven. Or she may cruelly admonish you. Ha! Naive decay. To honor dead spies, paradise might host a yearly CIA heaven day. Or the hypochondriac might try to color his imaginary illness and die a vain ache. They can't all be gems. 
Unfortunately, none of the above statements make any sense. But who cares? Look at all the unconnected things that got themselves connected. However, if we're dealing with Hebrew letters and words that have their own numerical equivalents and multiple definitions, we might find all sorts of entertaining and enlightening messages. The most common way Kabbalists replace one letter with another is by utilizing a table called Aik Bikr, or A-I-K-B-K-R, or the Kabbalah of the Nine Chambers. Letters having the same single digit root, 1, 10, 100, 2, 20, 200, 3, 30, 300, etc., are grouped together in nine chambers. And, the, and there's a, an example of the nine chambers. So in other words, uh, an A can be transposed uh, with a, a I or a J or a Y, or even a Q, because uh, A is 1, and I, J, and uh, Y are a 10, and Q is a, a 100. The Kabbalah of the Nine Chambers is particularly helpful uh, to those chicken Kabbalists who dabble with magic squares. A magic square is really the numerical matrix of its parent Sephira on the Tree of Life. In other words, Bina is the third Sephira, and therefore is the Sepharic expression of the planet Saturn. Consequently, the magic square of Saturn is a square three by three. This follows right down the tree of life and right up the number scale. Uh, the square of Jupiter, the fourth Sephira, is four by four. Magic square of Mars, five by five. The magic square of six, six by six. Venus, seven by seven. Uh, Mercury eight by eight, uh, and uh, uh, Luna nine by nine. The magic squares are filled with numbers, the same amount of numbers as there are squares in the magic square. Thus, the magic square of Saturn three by three equals nine. The magic square will contain the numbers one through nine, and the magic square of, of Jupiter. 1 through 16, etc., etc. And the numbers of all magic squares are ingeniously arranged such as that sum of the integer in any horizontal, vertical, or main diagonal line is always the same. Now, in the, I'll just cut to the chase. In the very big squares, there are more numbers than there, than, than there are Hebrew letters. And uh, in the small squares, there's not enough uh, numbers to represent all the Hebrew letters. That's where the Kabbalah of the nine chambers comes in. Uh, you, can, you can draw sigils of, of angels based on their letters being projected on the, the magic squares. And if uh, you, you don't have a, a 200 in the in the name that you're using, uh, you can use a 20 or a 2, okay? There's an example of a magic square. And I give the example, or the rabbi gives the example, of uh, how I could create a sigil from the bumbling nerd angel named Dorkael on the square, uh, Saturn squ magic square. I can find the 4 for D and the 6 for O and the I for A and the 5 for E, but what do I do for R and the K and the L? They don't appear on a square of Saturn. So you use the uh, Kabbalah of the Nine Chambers to uh, give its replacement. If there isn't a... If there isn't a a 200, go for a 20. And if there isn't a 20, go for a 2. That's where the Kabbalah of the Nine Chambers comes in. Other techniques of Tamora divide the alphabet into two parts in various ways and replace the letters with the letter in the box above or below it. This version in uh, figure 41 above 
is called A-T-H-B-H uh, after the first four letters of the code. The version of Tamura in the next figure is called A-L-B-T-H after the first four letters in its code. Now, I'm going to turn to the listeners right now. Are your eyes glazing over? Are some of you following most of this and some of you not? Good. Because in this, while writing this chapter, the rabbi started to do what his Kabbalah study was meant to happen to him. He was starting to drift into a higher level of consciousness that was greater than his Ruach. He was expanding. He was drifting into the next higher level of consciousness, and it started to manifest in his writing. See why I wanted you to listen to this one. He goes on to write, as you can imagine, there are nearly infinite ways to rearrange the letters so that they dot, dot, dot. It's at this point that Ben Clifford's, in Ben Clifford's last essay, that he begins to quickly disintegrate. I've attempted to replicate the broken word placement of the original handwritten manuscript. I believe it allows us the rare and poignant glimpse of the moment when his Ruach finally loosened its grip on his self-identity, allowing him to more perfectly identify with the higher aspects of his soul. Dot, dot, dot. Rearranging the letters. Dot, dot, dot. To peel back. Dot, dot, dot infinite ways, dot, dot, dot. All we can do is rearrange, dot, dot, dot. It just looks like creation, dot, dot, dot. Sometimes it is so, dot, dot, dot. We really don't climb the tree of life to get back to Godhead. We just peel back peel back, like Solomon in the nut garden. One membrane peeled back to reveal another, and another, dot, dot, dot. The center germ of the nut is invisible, dot, 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 is nothing, dot, dot, dot. Yet it carries the code of all its ancestors, and the potential of infinite nuts to come, dot, dot, dot. I'm that center germ, dot, dot, dot. Not the shell, not the meat, not the membrane. I am the nothing in the middle, dot, dot, dot. Sometimes it just becomes so very, dot, dot, dot. Well, I think I've said enough about Tamura and dot, dot, dot. Perhaps I've just said enough now. Please excuse me. You know, dear friends, when all is said and done, it makes no difference how we rearrange or substitute our letters. It makes no difference if one number reveals another number or word, or, or any of it. As long as all this helps us make a final connection. Because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what we've done, only that we did. Every letter, every number, every word, every image, every concept, every thought and component of thought is at once the loving creator, offspring and destroyer of every other letter, every other number, every other word, every other image, every other concept, every other thought and component of thought. 
it's really quite lovely, actually. So tidy. Yes, so very tidy. And so very, very smooth. I'll now read the epilogue. It's very short and will finally end the chicken kebab. The epilogue is called the Shem Ha Meforash, the divided name of God. It has an epigram. For I am divided for love's sake, for the chance of union. This is the creation of the world, that the pain of division is as nothing and the joy of disillusion all. I was. It is fitting that we end our study of the chicken Kabbalah of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford with what I believe to be his greatest work, The Secret of the Shem Ha Maforash. This tiny masterpiece was meticulously hand-printed on the back cover of his Games Kabbalist Play Notebook and could very well be the last words he ever wrote. Shem Hamaforash means divided name and has traditionally been the subject of much Kabbalistic speculation and discussion. Unfortunately, with the exception of his secret of the Shem Hamaforash, the rabbi left us with no written or recorded comments on the subject. We have every reason to believe Ben Clifford wrote these words shortly after the abrupt and enigmatic conclusion of Games Kabbalist's play, and shortly before his disappearance. In my opinion, he had broken through, at least temporarily, to the level of transcendent illumination that he worked so hard to achieve. I believe it was in the white heat of this exaltation that he penned the last 72 words of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford. God is. Undivided, God is pure potentiality and realizes nothing. God can only realize itself by becoming many and then experiencing all possibilities through the adventures of its many parts. The ultimate purpose for my existence is to exhaust my individual potentiality. My love for God and God's love for me springs from the great secret we share. The secret is God and I will achieve supreme enlightenment at the same moment. And so ends the Chicken Kabbalah of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed presenting it. And tomorrow we'll start a new book and a new chapter in our Mornings Together. See you tomorrow. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.